I will start off with um, talking a little bit about May. Our, uh, our meetings in May, we've got Cole Thompson giving a program on uh, May 10th. Uh, some of you may remember him. He gave us a, a good program on why black and white, and he's kind of continuing in that vein. His, uh, his program is titled Envisioning, Executing, and Critiquing Black and White Images. Uh, and I'm sure part of the reason that uh, boys scheduled him is because we have a monochrome competition coming up soon. So it's just in time for him to give us that talk. And our competition in May is open. You guys will have the, the freedom to send in whatever you need, whatever you want. And then May 31st, um, we've discussed it before, we've got that uh, outing to downtown Denver near REI that Todd Lila is going to be leading. It's one of our mentor events. Um, and one thing I want to mention about it, um, the executive board last year had discussed a bit about people signing a liability waiver. Um, when we have events, it's just a protection for the club. You know, we don't anticipate anybody trying to sue us, but, you know, we have to make sure uh, that the club is protected. So we will be requiring people to sign that waiver prior to the event. I do have it available on the website on the calendar event for that May 31st outing. You can download it from there. Uh, you can print it out, bring it to the next meeting. Uh, we can collect those and also Todd will have them available at the event itself for those people who have not filled one out yet. Um, I would ask that everybody uh, take care of that as soon as possible if you're going to be attending that event. And I assume a lot of people will be attending the event because it's a cool place to go. It's at the right time of day. Uh, Todd's going to be focusing on shooting stuff for future competition and stuff like in motion, uh, blue hour, golden hour, and that kind of stuff. So we'll have good opportunities down there. Um, we have a new member this past week. That would be Matt Hazelgren. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you're in the room. I don't see any, don't see you here on Zoom. And then uh, if we have any guests in the uh, the room, could you uh, identify yourselves and uh, just say a little bit about how you found us, what kind of photography you like to do, those kind of things. I don't, I don't see anybody, any new faces, Carl. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. There is somebody here named Oz. <laughs> I don't think I recognize him. Yeah, I, th I think he's been to the meeting once or twice before. Um, it seems like it seems like he's he's claimed the front row for his own. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like the uh, the executive row there, right in the front. It's like okay, we're we're the we're the stalwarts of the club, and we're gonna sit here. I see Frank Gibbs. Hey, Frank. Yeah. Hi, Frank. How you doing? I'm really doing well. Um, with all those things out of the way, um, let's. Get started here with, uh, of course, our subject was Wabi Sabi. It's something new for us. Um, we've never done that subject before. Our uh, technical definition was uh, Wabi Sabi is about finding the beauty or humble simplicity in things that are decaying, broken, cracked, incomplete, weathered, or aged. Quote, things are more beautiful for bearing imperfections. And as you all will see tonight, the 40 some odd images that we have that embody those kind of things. And also, you know, a number of people commented um, in our new Facebook group uh, that uh, they found it helpful that the information in the April newsletter led them to some resources and further descriptions that helped them uh, to either go out and shoot something or find something that they already had in their archive that would be suitable for this. You know, so other things like, um, intentional camera movement, uh, multiple exposures, or, you know, kind of tagging onto that imperfection kind of thing in the image. So. All right, so tonight we have Trish Sangelo, who has judged for us a few times before. And Trish has a, a short and sweet bio here. Professor Trish Sangelo has a Master of Fine Art and Photography from Cranbrook Academy of Art. She has been the gallery director for the Colorado Gallery of the Arts and has been teaching studio arts, commercial and fine art photography and study abroad at Arapahoe Community College for over 32 years. 
Trish provides legal marketing and pho photography workshops and lectures throughout Denver. Um, and I noticed that uh, you led a group to Paris a couple of years ago. Oh, yes, not just Paris, but yes. Yeah, so that, that study abroad thing looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, I travel several cities with my students uh, or two different tours in the summer, and I usually do one in October, November. So I'm actually getting ready to take a group to Greece. And it's actually our adult program. It's not the college. So it, they're all photographers. Very nice. Now, is, is that something that our members can get into? Oh, yes. And I can follow up with you on that. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so that's some sort of adult education program through the uh, community college? Yeah, you know, we have our workforce and community programs. And as college study grew and our, our age group ranged from like, you know, concurrent enrollment, 16 year olds to 80 year olds turning, you know, 80, I had someone turn 80 in Japan a couple of years ago. We wow. realized that age was really wide. And, um, but we were finding our more mature students enjoyed more upgraded hotels and a slower pace. And there were a lot of things that they would prefer, prefer including not having to pay for the college credits. So right. I'm running what I call adult leisure program, which is focused more on art and photography um, through workforce. So um, I'm, I'm getting ready actually, uh, Carl, I'll send it to you once I launch the next trip because sure. Greece is full okay. and you can share it with your group. Yes, always. That would be yes. fantastic. That would be fantastic. Yeah. You know, because we're always looking for opportunities to explore the world, you know, especially outside the borders. That'd be great. You know, and sometimes it's so great just to show up. It's kind of pre-planned. You get lots of free time and all you have to do is make beautiful art. Like that's my idea right there of great travel. Wonderful. Awesome. Good to hear. Good to hear. Before we get started, can I give everyone just a little update on how I look at imagery? Sure. Absolutely. Oh, okay. You know, I always like to say it because I'm a little different than probably as those of you who know me or what, you know, during critiques, um, uh, some of, I'm sure your judges are very technical in conversation. They talk a lot about the camera, the lenses and things like that. And all those, those are very important. Please remember I teach fine art photography. So I, in my own critiques, daily have to discuss the elements of art and principles of design. So for me, um, teaching my students as well as critiquing anything, I'm very much about um, how the image speaks. Is it, uh, of course, is it well composed? And is it meeting the characteristics of the topic, which I love the topic, uh, because it actually kind of forces you to think about elements of art and principle design in the uh, photography portion, like when you're framing it and stuff. Um, but I really do look at it as an art. So I discuss it in that fashion. So I just want to make sure for your new people, be prepared. <laughs> well, thanks for the explanation. And and honestly, that's uh, when I discussed this with you, you know, um, I said that I, I kind of felt that you were the perfect person to, to judge this particular competition um, because it is a little more artsy, a little more esoteric, a little more, you know, undefined, shall we say. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think this is a good match. All righty. So, um, Fred will be showing the images this evening. Um, I will say the title of the image. Of course, it'll display on the screen for just a little bit too. Um, we'll go ahead and, and you'll give your conversation and comments about it. And, uh, and we'll start with this particular one. And, and we'll, we'll stop a little bit um, after, after you know six or eight people have nines or tens. So we'll talk to the image makers, get their commentary about those images, et cetera. So. The, obviously, the calibration image is there so people can look at their screens, take a look at the grayscale, the color checker, all the other images there, because we know that Zoom will, you know, mess with our images a little bit. They may look a little soft. They may be a little low contrast, et cetera, et cetera. So if we're all ready, I will ask everybody on Zoom to mute, please, so that we don't get any background noise, phones ringing, dogs barking, those kind of things, and we want to hear what Trish is saying to us. So. Now this is titled Paint Me, Please. So as 
as you all might know, I did get to do a preview and look through them and um, contemplate some of the thoughts I might have. Um, uh, so it wasn't just on the fly, although I'm very good on the fly. Uh, when I first looked at this one, it was interesting. The paint me please one uh, was interesting to me um, because I was torn between the subject matter and the title. So it's always interesting when we incorporate titles in our pieces, um, but it does have such a painterly feel to it, obviously. Um, you know, you can start to see that connection. Uh, first, I love the perspective on it. I like any time an image allows me and forces me into the image. So I, I really enjoyed that. All the texture is so beautiful. There's a lot of, you know, all the patterns on the bottoms and the lines, and then all the texture across the top, and then how the sky comes and intersects at that main line. And uh, there's so much movement. The eye is really moving through the image. And then just the slight hue, because it's been, almost has a solarized look to it. And it's, um, even though it may appear to be black and white, it still has that kind of, you know, uh, kind of a magenta feel to it. Um, so there's a lot going on here and a lot to think about. Um, I'm going to give, and I think the only other thing though was, um, when, as far as critique, I, I did feel like the sky, um, you know, I like that it was divided in half like that, but maybe, maybe a little bit more of the main subject just for the weight of the bottom because we start to lose the top part of that image but it's such a minor thing that i had thought about i would uh, definitely give this one um an eight some of the whites are a little blasted at the bottom also just so that's what i was thinking along that this one side with the lines portal to yesteryear i've seen a few images as I scan through everything that are very straight on and and have a very flat perspective those are really hard sometimes to feel like you can enter into them and this would be one where um, I love the color I love the patterns and the textures and the decay uh, it is eye-catching it's nice to have a little bit of the bottom where the grass it kind of grounds it and gives it a little bit you know of, of weight at the bottom but uh, it is an image where when you look at it, you look right at that surface and you stop moving past it. And I'm not sure if maybe a slightly different angle might have assisted with that, if it could have um, just a, you know, a different perspective might have allowed us to want to mentally and physically enter into the piece because it is a very quick look, uh, at least for me. Um, I'm going to, because it doesn't hold my attention as long, I'm going to give this one a seven. Redstone. This one here, my first glance, I felt it was a little dark. When I look at the mountains um, up there, which is, is nice up at the top, it has good color saturation, but almost a little too dark. We're losing some of the details that might help uh, give it the texture it's missing uh, in the trees and a little bit of the red rock that's up on top. Right now, when I look at it, it just looks like a mass of darkness. And so I do think that you would get more depth in the mountain if there was just a, a little bit more mid-tone and highlight coming through that section. Um, the bottom is, is definitely interesting. The subject is interesting but it, it's not holding my attention. And I'm not sure if it's the way in the perspective it's photographed or if you needed more of that, or maybe it needed to be more close up, but something about it. Um, and maybe it's just correcting the top would hold it, but it, it doesn't have uh, that same initial feeling when I look at it, that it, it's really powerful. It just feels a little, pardon me, predictable. I'm gonna give this one, um, a six. Um, I believe this title should be Look Familiar. It's funny. It looks like a face. I know. It was the first, I kind of, when I yeah. <laughs> was looking at it, um, it has great, first of all, the black and white contrast on it is really nice. Uh, wood can be tough to photograph. The texture of the wood, if it's smooth or, you know, if it's rough or how much highlight is hitting it. 
Um, and although it might be beautiful, it doesn't always photograph as beautifully as we had hoped. This actually photographed really beautifully. And I think black and white certainly complements the ability to capture those highlights and textures. Uh, you get a little more depth, I think, out of it. Um, I really enjoy uh, the age of the wood and the movement of the wood. The composition is fabulous. You've weighted it a little bit, uh, you know, down and then off to the right. You've, um, the, the upper left-hand corner has some darkness in the lower right-hand corner to help offset that. So you, you actually are getting a little of a diagonal. So there's a lot of movement that's going on by the composition as well, of course, as the wood itself. The highlights look great. The blacks, your mid-tones are holding up. You've got a full zone system going. Um, I really think it's spectacular. Um, I'm gonna give this one a nine. Circle of life. I always enjoy seeing studio shots. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to capture a moment, um, but it's also nice to be able to create a moment. And, and I do really like the, the feeling of the decay of the flower, the aging, um, the passing of, and the composition is lovely. It's weighted really well. The color saturation is nice. The greens and the, you know, the magenta on here are really lovely with the gold. Um, I, I kind of feel like it has a little bit too much empty space uh, around the top part of the flower, uh, maybe crop just a tad tighter, but overall balanced quite lovely. I'm gonna give this one a seven. Old Adobe Home. This is one of those images I felt re it really reads flat. When I look at it, I, I'm looking at the home or the, the Adobe, and I, the mountains kind of fall flat in the background. I'm not getting that perspective. The horizon line is set a little high, which is fine, but it's not helping because of the, the straight on shot helping you enter the image. And images are naturally flat. So part of our job sometimes is to create the illusion of depth, the illusion of three-dimensional. And maybe if the if the whites were a little brighter, I did feel like there's a hint of blue. Um, the cyan is kind of taking over the image. Maybe if that was lifted out uh, and the white was as a little more true white as well as a little brighter, it might've helped us lead in. So maybe the bottom is a little brighter and then you get that you know, gradation going back that might've created that illusion of depth um, that might've helped. And the building itself kind of does blend into the background. So again, maybe bumping that contrast would help separate the building and the structure from the background as well as some of the darkness around it. Um, I'm gonna give this one a six. Post no bills. Very interesting image. I enjoyed, um, I did zoom in on this one a lot and I really enjoyed just the amount of texture and amount of subject matter. Um, you're, it's like looking at almost like a wearer's Waldo because your eye is moving so quickly as you hunt and look for the subject matter or look for the thing where your eye lands and feels content and you're really kind of busy moving through this image. When I looked at it closely, it did feel like that bottom section, uh, there was a little bit soft, but didn't feel intentional. Um, and for me, um, this particular image being that the, it's probably pretty shallow in natural depth, uh, that it probably should have been sharp, straight, because it's not a perspective, it's a straight shot. Um, but this is one where you have a, a flat image and it holds up to having the illusion of bits and depth because there's so much shadow going on around each of these little little pins and stuff. Um, so I really enjoyed, uh, you know, observing it and, and thinking about how the eye flows through a subject. Uh, but the softness was distracting to me on the bottom section. Um, I'm going to give this one uh, also, well torn because I really like the image at the same time. Um, I'm gonna give this one a seven. You have good contrast. That helps bump that sharpening. Fender abstract in the making. 
same thing when I look at it, it feels very flat when I first look at it. So, you know, you kind of look and you don't really go too far. You're kind of thinking, what am I looking at? Where am I going? Um, I, I wonder if a little bit more highlights in this also might have made it feel to have that illusion of depth a little bit, especially in the blue and the kind of light orange areas where you're seeing the, the motion of the drip. The texture is lovely. I mean, the subject is really interesting to look at, um, but it is lacking some of, of the contrast that it needs. Um, I'm gonna give this one a six. Under the weather. Now, and everyone's done a great job of really capitalizing on the the idea of something aging, weathering, um, moving on, passing. Uh, it's kind of interesting, and you're really doing a good job of thinking about the compositions and the elements of art and principles design because you kind of need them with some of these subjects. Uh, this is one where I think the composition worked well. You're balancing the main subject with even the wood not up at the top. That helps kind of bridge the gap between having possibly too much um, weight at the top, uh, but that helps hold the subject. So it makes an area that would have been negative space, positive space. Uh, and just the rust and the wood texture and all the variants that come from that, they're really nice. And I'm happy you slightly shifted it over so it's not too centered um, as well as being weighted down. So those are very thoughtful and, and, and uh, mind, you're very mindful in that when you were capturing the composition in your framing. Um, I'm gonna give this one a seven. Um, Trish, can I stop you just for a second here on, on that previous image? I, I hear you saying all these good things about it, and yet you give it a seven, and I'm a little confused. Oh, great. Thank you for asking. Yeah, it, um, I feel, I like, I think it's, it has all those things. I'm not sure that it is as strong in subject matter as maybe some others might be. Okay, but, um, but but our our criteria, our, the way that we judge or the way that we run competitions is we don't compare one image to the rest of them. Each image is taken. No, but when I think about an image, okay. when I think of scoring, when I think okay. of scoring, that you know, when I think of that part of it, I think of of subjects really being dynamic in the upper scoring, and maybe subject matter that doesn't quite carry that same weight a little bit lower. So it doesn't really even matter what subject it is, is where it falls on the on the scale of um, how dynamic it is. Okay. For me. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I just I just I just wanted to get clarification because I'm sure that some oh, people are, are sitting in the audience and going, I hear a lot of good stuff and then there's a seven and I don't understand that. Yeah. So. yeah. When we think about something that is technically good, Right. That doesn't mean it's as good as it could be if the subject matter is also very interesting. So those are two things that have to work in tandem to me when I look at imagery. Does that help also? I understand. I understand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now this is flaking paint on rust. Yeah. The and the sharpness of it held up really good too when I was looking at it earlier. I really enjoy all the different colors going on, all the different patterns. Uh, the composition is great. This one and the shadow is really strong. So it really gives it a lot of depth for something that's probably pretty shallow. Um, and I just find it interesting to look at. Like when I look at it, I want to keep looking at it. I'm intrigued. I want to. So this is uh, the idea of something that um, definitely draws my attention in. I, I, and I also like this format for this. I, I would like to give this one a 10. So this one for me, when I look at it, it's got a lot of, in, of good, you know, technical skills. It has a lot of good qualities of uh, elements of art and principles of design, but it also is a very interesting subject. So it, those, all of those play well together. Weathered steel. It's kind of hard in this image to see the texture, 
uh, when you zoom in, it has a really beautiful natural texture as well as what's happening to the surface of it. It's a little far back and that's to get that pattern. I'm sure that the, the photographer is trying to show you you know, all the white patterns that go across the bottom and then some of the darker, there's a nice gradation and um, there's some weight to the bottom, but you really can't see, like I said, the texture of it, which is also, I think, uh, something that's really intriguing. So I, I wonder if it could have been cropped a little tighter to also capitalize on what naturally is there before the rest, you know, starts to take place. The color is beautiful. Um, it is that thing again, where you look at it, the palette is kind of very similar. It, it has sort of a monochromatic feel. It's uh, the subject matter is kind of flat. It doesn't hold my attention as long as, as maybe I would like. Uh, but I, I do think that this, this one here is also, I do think right around a seven. Well did. Well, and it's just not the belt, it's the jeans too. I mean, both have that that age textural quality. The black and white works well on this. I think that it any time you extract color from a subject, the thing you see first is subject matter. When there's color, you see color first. It's psychological, it's just the way our brains work. Um, so it's it's always interesting to look at a black and white image because the subject matter is so critical and that it actually has to be really strong. And it really also depends a lot on some of the things like, you know, line quality, texture, perspective, the angle. It's a great angle. I like the darkness at the top. The eye, you know, hits the buckle. There's a lot of highlights, but then your eye starts to slowly move. You start to see all the different highlights and texture of the um, the the jean material, the stitching. Like you start to really look close, and it draws you in. It's not a quick look. This one is one of you need to observe it a little longer, and it calls you to. And I think it's so well executed because you want to keep looking and investigating and and it's got beautiful contrast the highlights are good the midtones again zone system looks great your blacks are nice and saturated and they play well in framing the composition i would give this one a 10. abandoned art this one really caught my eye when i first looked at it it was one of those moments where you look at it and go oh that's nice you know you just have that that um connection with the piece. Um, once again, it is black and white and um, it has a beautiful shadow cast. Uh, the main subject really holds your attention, that organic aged quality. The sky looks got, looks great from the um, the where where the horizon is and we have the nice white and then it, it goes off and and it's you know darker and then the ground you can see the the marks from the car or truck uh, that were out there and you can see the clay and it has a lot of perspective um, if you when you look at it because it starts light and then it, it continues on and then becomes darker. So it allows you to have that natural perspective into the piece. Uh, and the composition is beautiful and it's cropped really nice and it really showcases the subject matter. Um, I'm gonna give this one a 10. Charred Pier. This one, I, I feel like it has a little bit of a wash of gray over it. It's like the mid-tones are kind of taking over the highlights a little bit. And if it, it and, and white, you know, snow is hard. You know, we all know snow is hard. <laughs> um, you know, there's that sweet spot of where you get the texture of the snow, and, but at the same time, maintain a true white. And we're kind of just off a little on that. I'm not quite getting the white to be bright enough for the mid-tones to fall back. And then of course the, the darker areas, your shadows really fall back. Um, so it makes it look flat in it. And um, I call that muddy is what I tell my student. So I do wish that highlight would pop a little. The other thing is, and the sky looks great. You have a nice sky, but the depth of the sky where the charred part is, they kind there's not enough contrast to make them pop. 
And I also think the perspective is a little flat. It need, if it was angled a little more to have more perspective and recede off into the background, that might have helped. But right now, between the contrast feeling flat and the angle feeling flat, it just simply falls that way. Um, so I, that this one I kind of struggle with on um, those small little tweaks that might be helpful. So that that's hard for me. I'm I'm going to give this one a six because technically there's some things that need to be tweaked, and and the subject matter. The air's too dry here. Yeah, I stared at this one a lot. I really like. Uh, I love the color quality. Even the color has an age to it, which is nice. It works with the subject matter. The two play really nice together. Um, the soft focus around it is really nice because it forces you to where you want the viewer to observe and dissect. Um, just the details in the mouth. And I'm not sure when I zoomed in, I kind of looks like those are little feet from something else, but I could be wrong. Maybe you'll tell me later. Um, but I kind of, it was something that caused me to want to keep looking the way the eye is decaying and falling apart around that eye area, the texture of the head, the whole, <laughs> there's a lot going on. And the perspective is kind of nice. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. But you've also created perspective through the soft focus. So you're layering different things that create that illusion of depth. Um, I think it's really well done. And I, and I do like the way you composed it, um, the main subject down here and then softness above uh, and that tight shot. Um, I'm going to give this one a nine. Sugarloaf fire. The wood is beautiful. It, sadly um but the aging of the wood the the color variance on it i i was thinking you know and it and not that it matters but you know is this is this natural is this something we've added post-production or tweaked with filtering you know all those kinds of things run through your head um, but it definitely allows the wood to have more interest by having a variance of color on it um, and the darkness is great and all the movement that goes on. You definitely have depth by, because you, the way you photographed it, you know, the background is soft, it's far off, it's different. Um, I almost kind of wish it was cropped in a little bit tighter on that right side, um, just because although that tells us things are far away, it's not telling us much else. And I'm not sure that that is competing with the, the composition a little bit. Uh, and uh, maybe a slightly tighter shot would have also given us a chance to see a little bit more uh, detail of the wood. Uh, and um, a few of the dark spots are a tad too dark for the color. I, I feel like I kind of hit those spots and quickly move on because my eye just can't stay there. There's nothing there, so I move on. So I'm gonna give this one an eight. Ivy League. The overgrown Ivy definitely says age, right? Um, I, I really enjoy the composition. I like the variegation on the bottom, variegated leaves on the bottom. I, I think it actually helps because it, it creates a natural highlight in those areas by having uh, the white speckle throughout and then it gets darker and even larger leaves as you go up and then you're looking at just this little bit of the window <laughs> uh, is kind of nice and and you're getting that angled composition uh, so it's and it doesn't really fall flat too much, even though it's a flat subject, because there is so much variety in the highlights and shadows. Um, but it, it also just doesn't have a lot of subject matter. So it's more of a quick look. I feel like when I look at it, I don't stare at it for too long and do that pondering and questioning thing that I always love doing. Um, I'm going to give this one. It has a lot of technical things that are good, but the subject matter, I, I'd I would have liked something a little more dynamic um, around, um, I'm gonna give this one a seven. Foggy morning. Reminds me of my days in North Carolina. Uh, very beautiful. Morning shots and night shots are always a great time of the day to capture some of the thickness of the air. Um, I really, or, 
it even kind of looks smoky, uh, but it's beautiful. The softness in the background, you've got that, you know, perfect perspective going and it divides the image beautifully. Your negative space is quiet. It's not, it's not something where I look at it and think, oh, I've lost interest. Instead, you feel at peace. You feel soft. Uh, you feel calm. And it works well in the subject matter. Uh, and then the texture in the lower section is quite lovely. It has a hint of, of age to the color. So that's nice as well. It's a nice play on top of the subject. So all those things are working together really lovely. Um, I'm going to give this one a nine. Winter's Vine. This one was hard, is hard for me because it doesn't have as much to look at. It's very delicate, feels very fragile. You know, the, there's a lot of depth and density at the very bottom. And then the rest of it, the eye just kind of moves around real quickly um, because it is a vine that has no leaves. So the eyes is going to move through it much quicker. There's um, not as much contrast as I think that might have helped me. Uh, the darkness of the vine, it, it's kind of soft. Maybe if it was a little darker against the white brick, um, but it is kind of nice seeing the organic texture of the plant and then seeing the straight lines of the brick in contrast to each other. But it is a subject matter that um, although simplistic, probably with intent, is not holding my attention attention quite as long as maybe I, I feel it should. Um, I'm going to give this one a seven. A key project. That That's a fun title too, because I can think of it in a couple different ways when I was looking at it. I, I Again, I enjoy uh, when we take things and make little still lives of them or create little moments that whole creating the image um, is always a lot of fun. It, it does give you a chance to think through some of the details that maybe you don't always get the opportunity in a quick moment uh, when we're just getting out there and shooting before it's gone. Um, it's nice that, I mean, I love the color and the organic nature of the top section um, and the aging down at the bottom with the keys, that angular pattern, and then that one key off it really helps the eye not move through the subject so quick. It kind of slows your looking really well. And the composition is really well done. I'm going to give this one um, a nine. Nature's Renewal. The wood with all that growth on it is so lovely. And the color of it is so nice. And if you look really close, there's some great little moments in all of that texture. Uh, the, it's just so soft. Even the wood looks soft. And I don't mean from the focus. I just mean that you can see that, you know, it, wood softens and crumbles and becomes very pliable as it ages. Um, and so there's, it's very delicate to look at. Um, and not what you would think with wood, that it would be delicate. Uh, and I really, like the focus on it, the soft focus of the water, um, yet the main uh, you know, uh, subject is quite sharp, is lovely. And I, I really do like all these little intersecting lines of the wood and the composition really frames it quite beautifully. And it held up really tight when you get in there. The, it, the texture of it is really beautiful. Um, I'm gonna give this one a 10. And this is old paint and metal and Fred after, um after this image, we'll stop and go over the nines and tens that we've seen so far. I get, uh, so I, I sometimes feel like a broken record. I don't do 44 normally in one sitting. I do like 12. So <laughs> I don't sound as much like a broken record. Uh, but again, you know, there's a lot of beautiful surfaces that, that we encounter when we're documenting, especially um, you know, the, our, our weathered and aged surfaces always draw our attention because they're just so unique. And there is something so beautiful about that aging process and, and what happens during that process. And this is one of those, again, where we're taking a, a, a flat subject and we're, ca we're capturing the surface of it. So you have to be so intentional to 
keep the attention of the viewer on the image because you're, you're not getting the benefit of some of the other things like perspective and uh, maybe as much subject matter because it's one big subject. So without those, you're left with only a few of those elements, you know, to um, sort of compose the image. With that said, the color is fabulous. The color is great. The aging, the texture, again, all of these are so beautiful when you zoom in on them because that's where you really see um, all the little nuances that happen in that process. And then to see the paint dripping and adding that brightness that's needed on the subject. So when you look at it, it's not monochromatic. It's not just one color. So it does help uh, make the eye move through the image and it adds um, a little bit of natural depth because highlights create perspective. Highlights and shadows, if you have enough of those and the midtones aren't taking over, that creates natural perspective. And so you do feel like there's a little bit of back and forth movement as you go through it. Um, and, and the brush strokes, it's, it's just really beautiful. Um, I'm going to give this one a nine. This is Look Familiar from uh, Bob Bartlett. This one was shot in a forest and it was easy to see when I, um, once I turned the picture around and you see there's an eye there at the top, that was at the bottom. And when I reversed it, the whole picture came together, especially when I took it into uh, Silver Effects Pro and uh, kind of high, brought the highlights. Very nice. So this actually, the, the original picture was upside down from this, yes. right? Okay. Yes. That's cool. It's, it's good that you noticed something like that. This is Flaking Paint on Rust from Dan Greenberg. Uh, yeah, and that's exactly what it was. This is basically um, off an old truck that I found in Arizona. It is um, the thing that you're looking at is actually where the mirror used to break, you know, be the truck and it broke off. So, and I, basically I, it's a pretty straight shot. I took it with a point and shoot, believe it or not. And um, it is, you know, I pushed the saturation obviously and contrast a little bit. And thank you, Trish, for your comments. Very nice shot. Thank you, Dan. This is Belted from uh, Cliff Stockdale. Hey, hey, thanks for your comments, Trish. And um, yeah, that's just the belt on my jeans. Um, and it's pretty much right out of camera with the Fuji, like Acros film simulation. And the only thing I did, I think I cropped it a little bit. Um, and then a bit of a vignette was, was it. So. Thanks for your comments. Thank you, Cliff. I'm a Fuji fan myself, so I love their Acros black and whites. Uh, this is Abandoned Art from Danny Lamb. This picture was taken close to Highway I-80 in Utah. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere, but uh, it's such a beautiful art for me. I really appreciate your comments. Danny, can you tell us what that object is out there on the desert? It's just a piece of concrete, but I think is I don't know what it is, but it's yeah. I think it's not just a piece of concrete, it's, it's a piece of art, but it's just put it like close to Ivy ID, just at the roadside, but there's there's no surrounding and no other objects. It's just in the middle of nowhere. Right. That's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I spotted it when I was driving on I-80. I saw something, so I just parked my car um at the highway and uh, walked over there. Very nice, very nice. This is The Air is Too Dry here from uh, our new member, Matt Hazelgren. Great. Um, I took this about a year ago in the Galapagos Islands. It's a marine iguana that uh, stayed out of the ocean a little too long, I guess. Um, doing it a lot in post, if I should add a catch light to the eye, ended up deciding that wasn't appropriate. Um, but uh, to answer your question, those are its teeth, actually. Um, they're not really like sticking out of its mouth. Um, Thought the head was the most interesting aspect of it, so one with soft focus on every campus. That's a very nice, a little weird, but a very nice image. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Foggy Morning from Victoria Ashby. Yes, um, I did shoot that in Vermont, and uh, when I was there, and it the color was a lot more vibrant, and I did soften it up. Um, so thank you for your comments. <laughs> Right, and this is a key project from Gwen Patton. 
Uh, she did write here in the notes that uh, this was a photo taken on a 16th Street Mall in Denver. And Nature's Renewal, this is from Brian Donovan. Yeah, I shot this at a lake in Japan. Uh, I really liked the detail, but I wanted to soften out the background. So I shot it on a tripod and I used a six stop neutral density filter and a polarizing filter. Very nice, very, very nice. And Old Paint and Metal is from Oz Spenninger. Put this on a trip to Antarctica over the New Year's. Um, this was in the South Georgia island at an old whaling station. And this is a corrugated metal uh, wall. Uh, there were rivets kind of in the middle. I thought that was too centered, so I took those out. And I boosted the contrast a lot and saturated the colors quite a bit. Thank you, Oz. That's a very, very nice image. All right. is, is everybody ready now? We got, we got all the kings in the front row. We're ready to go. Okay, this image is once a juniper tree. Um, for this one here, it does have a really nice perspective and of the angle of it. And, and then you've got some of these pieces of wood that curl with age and that's quite lovely. Um, and then the, the richness of the red uh, soil underneath it um, is really nice. Um, but with all that said, um, I also find that um, the subject's not quite as intriguing, maybe as um, maybe a little bit more up close again, trying to really capitalize on the aging of it, um, things of that nature. Uh, but the highlights and shadows look pretty good in this one. Um, but again, the subject matter is, is kind of lacking um, in interest. I'm going to give this one a seven. This is a few bad apples. It almost looks like a photo on metal when I look at it. Uh, and I don't mean the newer version, one of our older techniques. Um, and it, I, I think it might be the, 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 there's like a solarization on top of the color that's kind of interesting to me. And the color itself plays so nicely together. Uh, this sort of like, um, uh, green glass, you know, that you might find in the ocean, you know, as it washes up and it's tumbled, it has that color to it. The, the color of the fruit, although the fruit is de decaying, the color is beautiful, which is interesting because you have this really lush color palette and these are nice complementary colors and they're aging. So there's this interesting thing that's happening between beauty and this aging process and I that in itself is intriguing to me to see that and the lighting on it is lovely you really can see the texture you know around the fruit um I love being able to see the bottom of it where you know you you get a little bit more of um uh, depth and darkness right there and it helps bring the fruit in so you get that more full rounded shape uh, also the stem is beautiful especially up close on the piece that's coming at you it has really nice it's a really nice focal point it and it held up really well when I zoomed in on it um, I really like this image because it plays with so many different things and there's a contrast that's going on between these subjects as well as um, just the visual qualities as well. Um, I'm going to give this one a nine. Old Dodge. Really nice at first glance. It's one of those that instantly you want to like move in closer to it. Uh, and um, I really like the desaturation around it where you're losing a lot of that color. Probably intentionally you've done that is my better guess. I might be wrong. Um, but then having that strip have the color on there, it has such a hand painted quality and art that in, I used to hand paint photos uh, 
you know, black and white out of the dark room, and now we're doing it on the computer. Um, but there's something so, so um, artistic about being able to do that, even on the computer. So, I mean, it looks beautiful with that hand colored quality to it um, by picking and choosing where you have it and where you desaturate it. The black and white itself looks really good. Your highlights look good. It's so important in black and white that the white areas retain just a hint of texture so that they don't blow out and become just a big white area. Um, and you have it, it's there. It's, it's that perfect white sweet spot. And then the mid-tones hold up great, which give us that three-dimensional depth. And then you have that beautiful black that recedes and pushes and gives that illusion of three-dimensional quality. So all of those things are playing together. And I even like how the light up in the front is a little soft so that our focal points are just a little bit behind. Like these are all nice things that are playing together. I give this a 10. This is Krabby Apple. Yes. Um, the composition's pretty nice on it, uh, having it off, and then you still have a, um, su a subject you can read, but it's soft off in the background. I do, this is again where I kind of feel like that white needs to be just a tad whiter. It's so close and it's hard. Again, snow is hard. Um, and then the color contrast on the red, it almost looks a little day glow. Um, and I've looked at this um, on my, my phone as well as on the computer because I wanted to double check the color on everything. And um, it, it's a little, it, it doesn't feel natural. Um, so it's a little bit too red or, or orange, maybe um, that crimson. Uh, it, it, even though it, it has a nice composition, um, I, I feel like something's missing and I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Maybe it's just the fact that the, the, the snow needs a hint more contrast, um, but I'm gonna give this one an eight. Rusted and splattered. We'll say that the window, when you zoom in, is nice. That texture back there held up beautifully in the shot. Um, but it is flat. It's a flat subject and it reads flat. And for me, it's a quick look. I look at it. I, I see the texture of the brick and all the beautiful line quality um, and wrought iron work of the window. I see the splatter, but it doesn't hold my attention. And because of that, I'm going to give this one. The window is lovely, though. Uh, I'll give it a seven. But I am torn. Still standing. Yeah, not for long. <laughs> One good gust of wind and that's going down. Um, the contrast is, is a little, for me, a little back and forth. I mean, I, the black and white on this, I almost think it has, at least in the grass, a little too much shadow. It needs that black is just a little too much in the foreground. Um, one of the tricks to that perspective, if we have control over it, and we don't always have control over it, is having the foreground be a hint lighter um, and then it recede darker and that's that illusion. And so I find when I look at it, I kind of stop. Um, and then the sky, although beautiful on the left, um, there's a lot of empty space on that right side and it becomes like, a, it's a lot of negative space. And so I keep noticing, I look at the structure um, and I go to that empty space and I kind of sit there. And then I have to almost intentionally make myself go back to the structure. And that's the place where I should be landing the whole time. So there is something about it. It feels very weighted on the left and not weighted on the right. Not that I don't like imagery that has you know, uh, weighted on one side or the other, but because the structure bends that direction, it's forcing my eye off versus if the, the structure had been going the other way into the empty space and forcing you in. So there's this weird thing that's going on just with what's naturally happening in the image. Um, and honestly, I do think I'd like to see a little bit more texture on the side of the, of the structure where it's solid black, because I think that perspective of that texture could be interesting, um, but it is the it is very interesting overall, and the and the overall contrast is is pretty good. Again, just a little dark for me with 
the, in the foreground. Um, I'm going to give this one an eight. Harnished and tattered. I think the part of this image that I was most intrigued by was right in the middle of the um, pewter. Like I, that's where I found it most interesting. Uh, all the reflections that were going on, the aging of the material. Um, the I will. I feel a little bit that the the still life is a little bit of a predictable setup maybe adjusting some of those things so it's not so perfectly balanced. Um, it's so symmetrical that you kind of lock in and you stay there. There's not enough asymmetry to force the eye around. And that's one of our jobs when we can is to help the viewer or tell the viewer, you know, where they should be looking and how to maneuver around the image. Um, to hold attention. And so when we're setting up a still life, that's when we really have control. So I would kind of think a little bit about when doing that. And probably you've done this where you move things around and you take multiple shots, allowing yourself an opportunity to look at them later and see which is the one that's, you know, really holds your attention the longest and whatnot. But it is perfectly symmetrical. The color looks good. The age of the coloring looks nice. Um, it certainly meets the criteria of the subject matter, but it is a little predictable. And that being a still life is when we get to make it a little bit different. So um, with that said, but there's some very lovely moments in it. I'm going to give this one um, an eight. Singer songwriter sang his songs. Really fun. I really liked spending time kind of looking at all the layering of the light, you know, identifying where he was, where, how he was standing, where the motion comes from. It's one of those images that makes you stop and look at it for a while. And I think as an artist, a photographer, that's kind of what our goal is, is to get people to spend time observing and questioning. And this one really does it. It is to me a little light. I feel like it needs a hint more saturation, at least maybe at the bottom section, because it, it's darker on the top and then it goes light. And often we want our images weighted a little bit. Um, that would really be the only correction, but I love the intentional motion of it. And um, the subject matter really holds my attention. But again, it needs, it does need that slight correction at the bottom maybe to just give it a little bit more uh, depth and then a little bit more uh, saturation. Um, but I'm gonna give this one a nine. Oldie but goodie. Old cars really lend themselves to such beauty, um, especially close up because you really get to see all those moments of aging. And so it's really nice that that's still around the emblem, we're getting that beautiful color. The two colors together are complementary. Um, so that's really nice seeing the rust with that turquoisey sort of sea, you know, sea glass color again that's just screams age. It's that classic color, especially on a car. Um, the emblem looks great. It actually is held up really well. Um, and it, it is kind of a predictable shot, I have to say. It's like straight on and out. But the simplicity of that with this subject and having the motion of the way the texture moves around it, it, it works. It doesn't always work, but in this case, and it's flat, yet it still works. And it has more visual depth, even though it's flat. I'm gonna, this one I really like, I'm gonna give it a nine. It, I do feel like it needs a little bit more, more um, darkness, a little more saturation. Feels a hint light, just ever so slightly. Waiting for a second life. Oh, so beautiful. I love your perspective. It's really fun. You know, you got that lens just right so that we're making things nice and big and slightly out of proportion. Um, even the front of it has that, you know, that real far out uh, look in, and the color is fun. 
I love seeing the desaturation around the outside. You get in that black and white kind of feel. The clouds are beautiful, so there's no negative space. You're filling your composition beautifully. You've got everything cropped in just right, so you have just enough negative space, but not too much. The grass looks fabulous. It really is an image that you start in that lower right-hand corner between the subject the texture and the color, which all play beautifully together. You shoot through that picture. Um, there's just enough lines that make you go both directions, but even the grass that comes up here on the side and it comes up near the window, that is just a lovely little moment right there. The wind or the, um, the light, the, when you look at that glass and you look at all the patterns in it, I mean, you still can see it, the aging of it. I. I really enjoy this photo and it really holds my attention and makes me want to keep going through it multiple times because I want to make sure I've caught everything when I look at it. I'm giving it a 10. Time worn at 2.38. It's really fun um, to see something that, you know, um, I like that round shape. The, the way it's cropped is really nice. And it's, it's great how the hands and that other little scallop there um, are where they're located is perfect because as your eye comes up and you're following that line, those help bring your eye back down so you don't exit off the image too quickly. And then to see the yellow at the bottom and have this very delicate moment, um, the texture on it is beautiful. Just overall, you can see all the um you know crackling of the finish that's going on and the the um hands are so delicate it, it's so beautiful it's a beautiful object you and that, that helps when we have very simple subjects is that the object itself is interesting and um i really i think it plays beautifully um, i'm going to give this one a 10. Living history. I like how we're looking into it for this perspective. I mean, I think sometimes people might have shot that from the other direction, thinking that that the, the main subject is where is should be in the front, but it's really weighted nicely, and the shadows and the reflections in the water, and the way they create those additional sh patterns and shape is so nice, um, and. The way you have the sand and then the water, then the sand, and then of course the intersecting line of the age boat, and then the uh, birds lined up for you perfectly. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> Can't control nature, but you know what? It adds a nice little organic moment right there. I think um, even though you have nice texture in the sky, it might've been a little too empty. So it was nice that the birds kind of helped you in that area. Um, and then you have that one little bird who's lost. He kind of, you know, he's kind of floating there in the center, um, which is, again, it's just one of those little tiny things that just adds another element. Uh, it's beautiful. Your contrast is fabulous. Again, great whites. You're, you hit the sweet spot. You've got a perfect white that has a hint of texture. It's not flat. And um, your mid-tones help with everything. And then you've got that black and it looks great. And I give you a 10. Tree wrinkles. Uh, great contrast. It, it's a little more contrasty maybe than what we've seen with some. And every subject needs a certain contrast. And so it's important that we think about the subject in which contrast level, whether it be low contrast, mid or high, complements the piece. So for example, like if it was a baby's face, you would not use this contrast, right? It would be too harsh. But on this subject, this is a good contrast. It really helps get the depth in the crevices and make something that's not too deep have a lot of visual depth. And I, I appreciate um, how you did that because it, you know, that black is important in this image and, but not so much that it takes away and sucks up everything. Um, I call it the black hole. And so you, you found that spot where you need, you use the black to help frame it, help push your eye in. Then you have your highlights kind of moving through the top surface. So you get that visual depth naturally created through 
the contrast. You have a great zone system and your white, same thing. I went in there and I searched your white and you have nice texture in your white. You don't have a blasted white and the contrast really looks good. I'm going it, to, it's really a great image in terms of contrast. I'm still, it's still not a ton of subject um, or, you know, but um, I definitely think it deserves, I'm going to give it a 10. It's really well, really, the contrast is great on this subject matter. And we're going to a few bad apples. And this is from Terry Hanford. So uh, this was taken during a snowstorm. Uh, these uh, apples had stayed on the tree uh, into December. And uh, I think the birds were enjoying them, but uh, they had a lot of character. So uh, appreciate your comments. Thank you, Terry. Uh, old Dodge, this is from Andy Robbins. Yeah, basically this was taken at a Halloween our show kind of on Logan Street. And I just walked by and was looking at all the Halloween antique cars. And just for some reason, I like the mirror of the Dodge of the other side of the hood coming over. And so that's why I focused on and then just propped it in and then obviously did a bunch of context and covering and that sort of thing to it. So what we got? Thank you. So, did you desaturate a lot? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And that car was not that color. That truck was not that color. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Yeah, that was, that was very, very nice image, Andy. Very, very nice. We appreciate it. Um, this is singer songwriter saying his songs. Say that three, three times fast. Um, Kyle Durlam. Um, thanks, Trish. And uh, I shot this less than two weeks ago for this competition, which I'm pretty happy about. So um, three second shutter um, at a concert at the Bluebird Theater. Um, I had a rail in front of me that I could set my camera on, but mostly it was handheld, I guess. Um, yeah, had a lot of fun shooting this. Yeah, that is a really cool image. I really like that. Is it an artist we would know or Damien Gerardo? What's his name? Seattle-based. This is Oldie But Goody from Bill Dixon. I think Bill Bill's out of town. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, next would be Waiting for a Second Life from Dan Greenberg. And this is a ultra rare 1938 Graham's turbocharger. There were two of them in a uh, junkyard uh, that I go to all the time and take other people to. And I'm, I'm really glad you like this one because I did spend a lot of time on it. Um, I took out a whole nother car that was in a picture um, mm -hmm. and spread the sky a little bit and did some other stuff to it. But anyway, um, yeah, I always like pictures like this where they're like kind of really in your face and kind of show the personality of the car kind of. So anyway, thank you very much. It's another awesome car picture from Dan. We love him. Uh, time worn at 238. This is David Besson. Thanks, Trish, for your comments. Um, this is a, a kind of a primitive grandfather clock sitting in our living room. Uh, so just doesn't prove you don't have to necessarily go far afield to find things uh, to, to do. But um, it, I, I was worried about the flatness and, and kind of wrestled trying to get the, the hands to cast a shadow um, on the face uh, to give it a little bit of depth. And hopefully that came through. But uh, thanks for your comments. Hey, what's the... Um... Manufacturers, I don't see an Isle of Man. Is this a? Um, it was made in the Isle of Man in the uh, around 1760 wow. by uh, J.R. Backhouse. The whole reason this works is because that flower sent you. If you hadn't had that flower there, right? <laughs> right. I mean, that's that's that a fantastic it. image. Thank you, David. Uh, Living history is from Danny Lamb. Uh, this picture was taken in Fort Stevens State Park near Astoria, Oregon. Um, it was on the same road trip for my another picture taken in Utah. Um, for the birds, I did wait for a couple of minutes, not too long. Uh, I expect they will come to the white spot, and I wasn't disappointed. Well, that's a lot of mileage out of I-80. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very, very nice image, Stan. I'm glad the birds could uh, cooperate with you. 
Thank you. And this would be tree wrinkles from Matthew Hazelgren. Yeah, I took this one last week uh, in prep for the competition. Um, I was just at Rocky Mountain Arsenal here locally, photographing some great horned owls, and uh, there was some really nice light um, on one of the trees. Um, I think they're cottonwoods, or maybe. Uh, and it caught the bark in a really interesting way. So, um, kind of took a shot while I was walking back to my car and uh, luckily it, it turned out pretty good. Um, went with black and white to try to increase the contrast like you mentioned. It's very nice that you uh, spotted this opportunity on the way back to the car. Yeah, very lucky. Nice. Okay, let's get, uh, get back to the show as they say. And this is Tired Hinge. It, this one, I really uh, appreciated the differences of, of surfaces. I mean, the the metal looks great. All the little different little, um, like the nail heads on it and then how it curls up around it. You know, those are all really, although small and may feel insignificant, they are great shadow opportunities and texture opportunities. And they add, you know, sort of that symmetry on there. Uh, the hinge itself looks great. The darkness of it up against the lighter and then the, all the brick. And so the it just is really nice. And I like your composition a lot. I really like how you kept a little bit of it around there to give us context. Um, but yet the main subject is, is the bulk of it. And then the shadows, all the shadows are casting help fill some of that negative space. So I really think it's well done. Your contrast looks, I mean, you can tell it was a hot day in terms of the sunlight. It was a lot of bright light, uh, very direct light, um, but I think it's all going the direction it needs to, to uh, make the image more interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm, I'm gonna give this a 10. Improvise, adapt, overcome. <laughs> yeah, it does look like it struggled a little. Um, the color on this is great. I do feel that there's a little, if color was added, it's it's too much, especially on the tree because the tree has this little bit of a wash of orange and it's pushing the tree into the background in terms of the color saturation. Um, I would have liked to have seen the tree maybe be um, a, a little less orangey, maybe a little more in the gray scale so that it could pop out. And I also think that that beautiful green um, mossy stuff that grows, I'm, I'm not a geologist, so, but that grows on the red rock is also has that little bit of orange on it. So it's, it's all kind of being um, taken over and you can't, cause that, that orangey yellow color, that lime color, uh, really can pop. And here it's not, it's kind of falling off into the background. And I think that could have been another nice color opportunity. And then the rock in the front is blending in a lot with it. So there's a lot of blending and um, almost, almost um, uh, monochromatic in a way. Uh, so, it, but I think the composition is nice. I, I like the way the tree is composed on the vertical format. I mean, all of that's lovely but it's very distracting for me to see all the color get washed away. Um, I'm gonna give it a seven. Trellis on white wall. Uh, high key light. In some ways, when I look at this composition, I almost like if I take the bottom away, like I put my hands over it and I block it and you can do it just by doing that. Um, I actually almost find that more interesting because it's the white on white in some ways, although is super simple, can make a big impact, but the bottom of it just kind of um, makes it ordinary for me. And I, I would have liked to have seen more abstraction from it. So the context of seeing the bottom is where the ordinary comes in. But when you get rid of the bottom and you just look at maybe the upper three pieces of wood that you know are horizontal, if that's where the cropping might have occurred and that slight angle, there's something more interesting going on there. Um, and also because of the angle, it's a, the variance of it's so slight to the brick, um, it creates a little nice movement. So I would, 
personally probably rethink the composition a little bit. Um, it might have made it more interesting and intriguing. Um, I'm going to give it a seven. Well worn. Um, the focus on this one felt a little soft when I was looking at it. Um, I could not stay on the handle. And I'm not sure if it's the way it's composed or if it was the, the focus on it. Um, I, I do appreciate the slight angle. It helps it not look too flat. And you're also able to see all the rust on the uh, little... Uh, uh, why or uh, I, uh, lack of better words, but uh, on the little grate there where you can see all the wire and the wood looks nice. Um, but I, for me, I, there's something that keeps throwing the focus off for me. So uh, that was distracting. I'm going to give it a seven. Logging boat remnant. I like the shift in the composition. I think that looks really nice. I'm also happy of those little tiny little uh, round pieces of wood um, on it because I think it helps slow the eye down when you look at it and it adds a little place to land. Um, the wood itself is beautiful. The color is beautiful. I still see the natural wood and it looks natural. So if you did work your magic around it, you did a good job of leaving some of the natural wood untouched and not have another hue over it, which is helpful. Um, I think some things that might have made it uh, even more interesting, it's a nice abstract image, um, is uh, just bumping your, your saturation ever so slightly. And then on that shadow that's on the right, maybe making that a little darker because then you would have dark, the brightest section, the natural wood, the line, and then it project out. And I think it would be like this moment where your eye's doing this. Right now, your eye just kind of goes like that. And it's not, I'm not saying anything terrible, but just those slight tweaks might have made it even more dramatic. But I'm going to give it a nine. Painted and weathered metal. You really can see the, the texture of the metal, which is nice. And of course, the corrugation that's going on. I love the rivets going across it. I think um, instead of it just being up and down, up and down, it, it adds um, almost like a second subject matter um, versus the color, which is the first subject to matter, uh, because that's the thing that draws your attention. It, it helps with the highlights. Um, and the oranges look great. This is one where, although it's flat subject, it actually is quite interesting to look at. And there's just enough texture to make you want to look a little closer to it um, to see all those nooks and crannies. Um, uh, and I, I do like sort of the darkness around this edge here. I'm happy that lower left corner isn't too washed out because that could be a nice exit point. And it's just dark enough down there uh, ever so slightly to help push the eye back in. So, you know, that's our goal, keeping people inside our imagery, right? And and controlling where they're looking. So um, I, I really, and then the hints of that lime color popping through, I kind of wish I could see those a little more. I almost want those to pop ever so slightly more um, just to have that extra color and not be so monochromatic. But I think that um, it's still there. It's still really, you know, the, the color makes your eye move around the way it's colored. So. Um, I'm going to give it a 10. Sheridan Ironworks. This one to me looks, I'm not sure what word I want to use. Um, it's soft, but, and I'm not talking about the focus. I'm, I'm talking about the color. It, it, it feels like the highlights aren't quite bright enough to bring it forward. It just is, the image is receding. This is one of those subjects where you have to decide, you know, do I leave the bottom in so that people know what it is? Then my question is, do they need to know what it is? Is that the point? Or might cropping in a lot tighter and really finding the abstract, unique moments. Um, for example, that lower section under all the text and the, the numbers, that right there is a photo in itself or even just a hint to the left where the where the the metal is curling 
that uh, moment right there. there. There's a whole bunch of moments, but when you look at all like this, they kind of get lost in the picture. Um, for me, I kind of wish I would have seen something closer and gone that much further with abstraction. Um, so I'm kind of torn by the, 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 the cropping of it, what you chose to keep in versus what you did not, you know, what, what's out. So that's where I am the most in your highlights. I, I, I need those highlights to be just bright enough that it has a little more visual depth. It reads really flat. Uh, it is beautiful though. I love things like this, um, but I'm gonna give this one a seven. All right, and this is the winner for the longest title ever. Um, and I've seen days with billowing clouds that I never thought would never end. You know, this particular image, and there's a few of the others that, that did this too, where I would step away from my computer, almost like a pointillist painting, where up close, it's one thing, and when you back away, it's another. And sometimes you need to be further away to sort of see the other things. And the reflection on this one is that, and again, I apologize for, I can see my camera glitching, but this one, um, when you, and maybe for those of you who are sitting in the audience, um, you get to see that perspective, more of what I'm talking about versus those of us who are just inches away from the computer. Um, but the computer people, if you lean way back in your chair or get up and walk a little further back and look at it, you really start to see the reflection because you're torn between the detail of the fabric versus the reflection of that beautiful blue sky and cloud formations that are also at least in this photo, the same color as the blue that's a framing it and also speckled on the rust. Um, it's a really interesting thing when images force you or encourage you to look at them from different viewpoints during viewing. And I see this in the gallery a lot where people will walk way back and then get really close and go back and forth. That, that level of control and engagement um, that the photographer, you know, puts forth. It, it's interesting because you, you've got them in this beautiful dance of looking and observing in different ways. Um, and it does read flat, but not all the time. It depends on where your perspective is, where you're standing. Um, I, I really enjoy the play of that. There is something very intriguing about that. Your color is great. Your, your composition, although predictable, still works. I mean, it is a very symmetric subject, um, and, but all, everything else is working so nicely. I'm gonna give this one um, a nine. And our final image of the evening, Aspen Gold. Yeah, the intentional movement. Um, I love when there's intention in it. Um, sometimes I critique images and the students try to pull one over and they're like, I meant for it to look blurry. And you're like, no, you didn't. I know better. This one looks like it's meant to be, you know, have motion. Uh, it, you can tell because it's very deliberate and that's when it works. Um, not when we pretend it would, you know, in accidents, some amazing accidents happen, of course. Um, but it is really fun. It adds a nice kind of, um, uh, uh, whimsy to it. I think it also has such a painterly quality. You almost feel like you're looking at paint strokes. And it's nice when photography can kind of bridge the gap with other mediums and you start to see this sort of mixed media look to something. Um, it, it's fun. And um, I really like the way you played with it. I'm happy the whole thing's not the, the top of the tree. So it, it helps identify the subject matter and and the grounding of it. Um, but I, I do think that uh, has played very nicely. I'm, I'm gonna give it a nine. Okay, we've got uh, five images towards the end there to run through. This, this is Tired Hinge and this is from Steve Wilton. Yeah, uh, thank you, Trish. Uh, this was shot in Lyons uh, last fall. I think it was in September, October uh, and it's a 7.30 a.m. 
shot, the sun coming in there, and I used a Fujifilm camera. Thank you. Where, where was it, Steve? Lions, you know, uh, Route 66 on the way to uh, Estes Park. Yeah, Steve, if you can give us the GPS location for that, because we want to go shoot that thing too. So, uh. yeah, it's just a little bit north and to the west. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a very nice image. Our next one is uh, Logging Boat Remnant. This is from Gwen Patton, and she's not here this evening. She noted that this photo was taken in Montana, south of Glacier National Park, south entrance at the Highway Museum. So if anybody goes to Montana and Glacier National Park South Entrance, stop by the Highway Museum. This is painted and weathered metal from Oz Fenninger. Yeah, so this was taken almost the same time as the, my previous entry. Um, I worked a lot on, uh, well, I saturated colors a lot and I intentionally dimmed down the edges so that the viewer's eye would not go off the edge. Uh, and go more in the center, especially the, the bottom right area. It's quite a, a bright spot. I didn't want the viewer to, to focus on that. If I'd made the green in the upper part on the edge there much brighter, I thought that would probably draw the viewer's eye to the edge and maybe out of the picture. Anyway, I did quite a bit of work to lighten and darken things just to direct the viewer. So that's it. Well he did a lot of work to get there three times. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's very nice, Oz, and, and great on the photo editing after the fact to, uh, to make it more than it was. Right. Yeah, the lighting was very flat on that. And uh, for our longest title ever, Terry Hanford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you for uh, uh, scoring the title. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Dan Greenberg shared his secret salvage yard, and uh, this was an old bus in it that someone had uh, converted to live in, and uh, then it had outlived that purpose, and it sits in the salvage yard. But uh, I was standing there and just saw the reflection of the uh, great sky off the window, and voila, here it is. Thank you. No, that's a great image, Terry. And and honestly, I, I do love the, the titles that you do. You, you put a lot of work into your titles. And our final image is Aspen Gold. This is from Allie Green. And I know that she is on her way to the UK and uh, didn't leave any notes about the image. But uh, I, I was personally glad to see somebody use intentional camera movement. Well, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. All the images from our Wabi Sabi competition. Awesome. So Trish, do you have some final words of wisdom overall or any extra commentary that you'd like to impart some great knowledge on us or something? <laughs> I'm not sure about great knowledge, but um, I will say I did appreciate, um, you know, I, th I think, you know, I, when I started off in photography, like many of you, it was all film, right? And then this thing digital came along and it really changed what we could do to our images. I still teach darkroom though. So if you guys ever went to darkroom, I still teach it and I love it. And we do a lot of tricks in the darkroom, but man, is it easier to do it in the computer and in so many different ways. And I appreciate purity, but at the same time, I appreciate post-production. There, there is something so creative, secondary that can happen to our images when we're adjusting color, taking out another car. You know, I had swap all the time. Um, being able to do those things it, is creative. It's another creative outlet. And I appreciate that you guys work on that and that you think about you know, you know, adding a little depth to the edges. And, and as you had mentioned, um, I forget which gentleman it was, but you were talking about, you know, holding the eye in and thinking through, if I add a little lightness to the green at the top, it might, the eye may blow off. These are levels of control and manipulation that we have over image that we might not have been able to do as easily in dark room. Um, and so being able to do that, I find fun. I find it, um, it's a creative outlet, but I also find it really can make an Im image 
dramatic and more dreamy and more have more impact. And I appreciate that you guys are doing that. Um, it just makes the images so much more interesting to look at. So um, thank you. Thank you very much for all your commentary. And, um, you know, one thing that you hit on a couple of times this evening was that, you know, light and shadow and, and how that can change the perspective or draw you in. And, and I, I think I, I find myself doing this. And, you know, when I looked, when I heard what you said about my images, um, and I looked at them, you know, a second time, I, I thought, yeah, well, I could just do some burning and dodging and I could enhance this and enhance that and change a bunch of things. I think, I think a lot of photographers get, you know, they do global adjustments too often. Um, whereas simple stuff like burning and dodging or using the masking tools that we have now, um, you know, Photoshop and Lightroom just put out their AI enhancement uh, for denoise, but that also included some masking enhancements too. So we, like you said, we do have a heck of a lot of control after the fact, you know, in the digital darkroom. And Carl, let me just say too, there's a difference between trying to overdo an image. Like sometimes when I look at over sharpened images, it's really obvious and feels fake, right? And I think we've all gone there. <laughs> we've all done that. Um, but when you're doing it for creative purposes and burning and todging is such an, we do it in the dark room, right? So why wouldn't we do it digitally? Um, those are small things we can do to enhance and make something more creative. And so I try to just find that sweet spot in there between the two, you know, right. so. Uh, I have nothing else. Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything before we uh, get out of here? Going once, going twice. Sold. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Trish. Yeah, thank you for everything. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening, and I hope it was uh, an educational evening for all. Thank you and good night.